We were selected, our platoon, to go to Afghanistan on a dangerous mission. We'd be doing strike operations against Taliban and Al-Qaeda. I'm on night vision, everything's black. We're up on a hilltop. I stepped on an IED. It turns out that what I stepped on was actually two big artillery shells that could have destroyed an armored Humvee, but one of them didn't even go off. I was able to, to survive, but really more than, more than that was just the immediate response of my teammates. I owe my teammates in the field so much for what they did. It's a special thing to be a part of an organization where people are, no kidding, willing to lay down their life to save yours. After an injury where I was knocked down to ground zero, I had dozens of surgeries. I was in surgery three to four times a week, seven to 12 hours of surgery. Couldn't get out of bed for 100 days. Couldn't even roll on my side. When I was injured and in the hospital, it would have been too much for me to think about how hard my life is going to be. Am I even going to live that long? Am I going to be in a wheelchair? Am I ever going to be able to walk? I leaned so much on SEAL training mentally. SEAL training is tough physically, but in order to get through it, you have to have your ducks in a row mentally. The fact that I did get through the training really helped me when I was injured. When I first left the military hospital environment after my injury in 2011, I moved out to Colorado to pursue training for the U.S. Paralympic Nordic skiing team. That's cross-country skiing and biathlon, which is cross-country skiing with target shooting. On the Paralympic Nordic ski team, I have a cross-country coach, a biathlon coach, a strength coach, a nutritionist coach, as well as a physiologist coach. I need so many coaches because there's so many different aspects of performance that I can't be an expert in every single one of these aspects. I need to be able to take all of these different opinions and all this advice from, from coaches and apply it in a way that makes sense for me. I think people resist coaching because of ego and this is something I've had to deal with. My ego sometimes gets in the way. That's just one of the bigger barriers to, to receiving coaching is, is thinking that you know it better. If you're part of a team, it lifts your own performance. Even if you may be operating as an individual, to think about it as a team. Think of the coach as part of the team. I went to Pyeongchang in 2018 and I had six races and I came away with a gold medal. And just to see the pride in the faces of the coaches, they had seen me training for years and it was just really special to see how much it meant to them. And that made me really proud. There's no way I could have achieved a gold medal without the coaching. For seven years of, of training and, and there were times in the beginning when I thought I knew too much and since then I've learned to let go and trust the coaches, trust the training plan, do what I'm told. The key to high performance for an elite team is to have a sense of purpose and then to have cohesion. And so every member knows their specific role and they see how their role relates to the performance of the organization. And the organization has solid leadership, solid coaching, solid mentorship. And I've, I've learned that as a Paralympic athlete, there's an amazing ability to send a positive message to kids and other members of the community and to raise awareness I think one thing I learned with my injury is that uh, I've been given a huge gift, which is still to be alive, and so I'm gonna try to capture every day and be grateful.